Hello friends, welcome to You Enjoy Life and this is a guide to a good life. So we're going to be talking about divorce today and divorce is not a fun subject. I don't think anyone gets married with the intention to get divorced. <laughs> That'd be weird, um, although who knows. Uh, but inevitably divorce, I think 50% or however many percent of people, around 50% half of people get divorced. So it's obviously a very common thing, but when we go into marriage, we're not saying, hey, I want to get divorced. Um, and I think in a weird way, maybe if we did, divorce would be easier, but because we're not expecting to get divorced, it's like go into this beautiful, sacred love union with people, with someone, people, usually with one person. And, you know, you create this whole life, but what you don't realize when you, until you get divorced is that you actually signed a contract and that to get out of that contract, there's a lot of things that you have to figure out. And suddenly you go from being in love with the person and being, you know, married to them and committing your life to them to being in a legal battle. And that's, first off, I'm very unfortunate and sad. Um, and I went through this past year. As of March, I think, 1st, I was divorced. And it's, it was kind of wild because right after, of course, quarantine hit. Um, but I want to talk to you a bit about the process. And from, I mean, a little bit of a technical perspective, I'll give a little bit of that, but also more emotionally, like how can you stay sane? How can you actually go through this process without completely like losing yourself to it because it can be very scary and very lonely and very hard and I only have my one experience um, but I've talked to a lot of people and I just wanted to give you some tips to help guide you through this process um, if you're going through it or if you went through it and you're like what the hell just happened um, so just a quick side note um, if you want to get deeper guidance and mentorship from me um, while I do do one-on-one -on -one stuff um, you can message me about that um, I have a Patreon page and the, the whole idea behind it is to give deep guidance and mentorship that's extremely affordable. Um, there's a lot of programs out there that are hundreds, thousands of dollars and for me it's just a very small $3, $5, $10, whatever you want to pay a month, you get access, free download of my book, you get access to all bonus content. It's not even bonus content, it's like more in-depth content, practices to ground yourself, to be more mindful. And on top of that I'm going to be launching a course early next year where you actually get to go through this like how to live a good life course and how to break free of the matrix and actually like discover who you are in all your fullness. So by signing up you get access to all that and just a deeper connection to me and a cool community of people. So check out the link below if you want to check that out and we're, 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 going, we're going deep together but I want to remind you you're not alone. And the same goes for this video. So if you're going through a divorce right now and you've been searching how do I survive a divorce on YouTube or whatever brought you here. Um, First off, I want to remind you that you're not alone. Again, 50% of people um, go through divorce. So, it kind of, I remember when I was first buying a house and I was driving around the neighborhood and we were looking for homes and it was really daunting and really scary. And I was like, oh my God, like the amount of paperwork and the things I have to show and all the things I have to go through in the research, this is overwhelming. And then I'm looking around and it hit me and there's homes everywhere. Everywhere I look, there's people that have homes. So even though it can be a scary process, it can't be that hard because if almost everybody we know is doing it, um, <laughs> it's it, uh, why do I have to worry, right? It's, it's possible. And, and maybe that sounds odd, but to me, divorce is kind of the same way. It's like, it's a very scary, daunting process in a lot of ways, but also it's so common that if you can just stay grounded and stay centered as best as you can, um, you'll be okay. Now, first off, I, the divorce I went through, I did not have kids. So having kids is a whole nother level that's definitely much more complicated. Um, but I just want to talk to you a bit about the general experience. Um, what, so like I said, not expecting to go through divorce, um, you don't really plan for it. And then all of a sudden it comes and you're having to negotiate um, your life. And, and every state is different. So like in Colorado, for example, everything's split 50-50. And yes, you can, you can make some changes and stuff, but generally the court says, okay, here's the assets that you have. Um, here's how long you've been married. Here's who makes this much money. Like we want to find a very even thing and even, you know, negotiation and contract and, and, and divorce proceedings. Um, one thing my dad shared with me that always stuck is in a negotiation, the ultimate goal is you want to have both parties walk away feeling good. And, and even though that's much more complicated in divorce, I think something to consider is if you can find some way to connect to your partner, um, if they hit your guts, um, that makes it much more challenging. Um, but if you can find some way to create some kind of connection, 
and recognize that this is happening for the best and that you both just want the best for each other and you can find a way to create that. that that's the ideal situation. That's not always the case for sure. Um, but another thing is I recognize that when you're going through divorce, you know, your partner may be extremely hurt and sad, depending on how it, you know, if you've cheated on them or just, you know, you just lost touch or one person made the decision, there's lots of different things. But recognize that you or your partner, or both, you, both of you are probably very hurt and upset. And, and they might be saying things to you, they might be sharing things that are very hard to hear and very hurtful. Um, but remember that when people are hurt, you know, they, they express hurt. And you don't have to take it personally. And even though it's extremely hard not to take things personally when you have a person that you've loved or that you have a deep emotional connection with telling you things, um, try your best not to take it personally. And, and a little exercise that I like to do is sometimes journal. What are the things that they're saying and what am I making that mean? And just a quick side note, if you hear a lot of noise, I'm, I'm sitting by a huge, beautiful river, but it's a bit loud. Um, so, so I journal about, okay, what did they say and what did I make that mean? Because what they're saying, I might say, this is, how dare you say that to me? You know, why, why would you, like, I can't believe you think that. It's like, recognize they're just upset and they're scared because their whole life and your whole life, everything you believed, everything you thought, everything you thought you were creating together with this person is suddenly over. And, and your dreams and your ideas and your reality is being shattered. So people often, when they're out of control, it's like you're swimming in a gigantic tidal wave of crap and you're just trying to, you know, come up for a breath of air, but you're so scared and you're so thrashed around and it brings out the deepest traumas and wounds inside of us. All the fears that we have of abandonment and being hurt, all the things, suddenly that protective side comes out, you know? And you might find that you or the other person or both are going through lots of different waves. And some days that they might be more open to negotiation and more, um, you know, in a place of love. And other days they're feeling really hurt and triggered. And one of the best pieces of advice that I got was with divorce is, don't make a decision until it's absolutely clear. And what this has been something I've just been using in my life in general, but rather than feel like I need to feel pressure to make a choice, or do I want this, or do I want that, or do this or that, it's like, just take a little time to let the emotions process and say, okay, what do I really need? What's really fair? You know, and if you're coming from a place of what's really fair on both sides, I really believe that in some ways that will percolate through. And again, there's so it's such a huge spectrum of different situations, but all you can do is find ways to stay centered and stay grounded within yourself. Because if you start to take things personally and if, if your partner is upset and frustrated and, and they're really good at you know pushing your buttons, it's only gonna blow out of proportion. So so recognize that at the end of the day, like some kind of agreement has to be made anyway, right? And whether you have kids or whether it's a money thing or a house thing, like you have to find a way to stay centered within yourself to be clear and not get emotionally wrapped up in what is going on. Um, another piece um, that I've recognized just in negotiations in general, and, and, and but especially towards marriage, is at the end of the day, you know, be smart, be, be smart and, and do your research and talk to people and, and, and don't be afraid to get support. Um, but at the end of the day, like if you're in a marriage that isn't working, recognize that no matter, like it's easy to get kind of caught in the little details and, and all the do I do I deserve this or that or I want this thing or that thing like all the little details but at the end of the day they're material things and having yourself and being in a situation like if you're in a bad marriage and you don't feel loved and and you're fighting all the time it's like neither of you deserve that it's not that we can make up stories about our partner and they did this and they did that and all this stuff but at the end of the day it's like neither of you deserve that energetic connection and if you've tried to work on it and didn't work accept that it's over and that just that break, that emotional break, getting to be yourself, getting to have you know, you without this really intense energy that's always swirling and you're always fighting is invaluable. So yes, it's, you know, if you believe you deserve the house and, and the car and the money, whatever the things are that you believe that's your own to figure out, but recognize that having yourself and being out of that energy can be literally priceless. Um, so that's really helped me. Um, another thing is yeah, just having support from friends and family. Um, at least a few people that you feel like you can talk to. Uh, there's lots of people that have gone through divorce and, and, and there's even people that haven't. And it doesn't have to just be people that have gone through divorce, but someone who knows you and that you can reflect ideas off of. Because sometimes, you know, there's parts where I tried to do everything alone and I was starting to feel like, whoa, I'm, I'm, I'm all alone here and, and no one's gonna get this. And 
I tried to like do it myself. And then when I started talking to some friends, getting some feedback, I was like, oh yeah, that does make sense. I'm not crazy or whatever it is. So, so not being afraid to reach out is really helpful. Um, but it, it really always comes back to having some level of trust and knowing that like the way I look at my marriage is it, it wasn't failed and a lot of people say this like I'm sorry your marriage didn't work out or like I'm sorry that it failed and I don't see things that way like it, when I look back I'm so grateful for my partner and everything that we had gone through together and it feels like a lifetime you know it really feels like we, we shared a lifetime and it was amazing and we experienced so much and there was so much love and so much growth and even all the hard things looking back I can see now myself and I can be grateful because I've made it through you know, the, the hard part, the, the, the breaking up and, and, and the, the struggle and the sadness and the loss. And even though I still, you know, feel sadness some days and process that, I see who I am and I'm like, wow, that experience really helped me grow into something completely new. And there were times when it was so scary and so lonely, but I'm so grateful for our experience. I'm so grateful for our marriage. I'm so grateful for her, everything that we went through. I have nothing but love. And even during the process, I had to keep going back to that because when we were going through the divorce, you know, things can get challenging and it can be sad and scary and lonely and you know questioning myself but when I look back on it I don't think it was a failed marriage I think we had this amazing experience in this container for seven years and we get to grow and love and learn and get clearer on who we were even through all the hard stuff and the good stuff and now it's over and remembering that it's like whoever I am now is not who I was at the beginning and whatever I had to go through to get there, as challenging as it was, it was so worth it. I, I can figure all the material things out, but to recognize the gift, you know, no matter how hard it is or how scary it is at times, it's like if I'm just trying to, if, if one person is fighting on one side and you just think you need to fight back, even when you get wrapped up, it's like you're just creating this. So to be able to step away from that, take your own center, not take things personally, and see that this is a blessing once you get through it. Um, even if it doesn't feel like it at times, um, to me it makes all the difference. So yeah, I just wanna be here as a reminder to you that everything will be okay and when you get through this situation, um, whatever you end up with um, will be exactly what you need. And, and yeah, you can fight for what you believe and, and what you think that you need, um, but also don't lose yourself in that process and don't become someone that you're not just because somebody else is hurt or sad or lost and know that it will work out and it already is and always is working out um, and it's always a blessing to have you here i appreciate you watching this video um, again click the link below to check out my patreon if you want to get more support i make these videos just i turn my camera on and i start talking um, and i think the patreon is a place to just go deeper um, and not have the distraction of youtube and get nuggets of inspiration um, but everything i share is only because it's like when I think about why I'm alive and why I exist, it feels like to have these experiences and to go through them in a way and to stay sane, to stay clear, to stay centered, and then to be able to share the experience that I had to maybe give you some guidance or inspiration. Um, so that's what we're doing at the Patreon on a deeper level. And yeah, either way, be well. Talk to you soon.